Hi, this time I want to show you how to optimize your SimCity for either your PC or Mac. First off, if you're running on a PC, make sure your NVIDIA or AT drivers are up to date. That's gonna have a huge improvement if you have an old one. Second of all, if you're on a Mac, like me, you can consider a using Bootcamp and installing Windows and a Mac on it, or I'm gonna give you a few tips to be able to play on the Mac and not suffer as much. So, resolution. You will want to stay away from native resolution as much as possible. The reason why is because SimCity is a beautiful game, but only if you set your settings higher. And the only way to do that and still be able to play it is giving up a few pixels on the screen. So try 1080p or 720p and see how it goes on your computer while tweaking the other settings on the very same resolution. It will look a little bit blurry, but not too much. In my case, 1080p works great. It looks fine and you get a lot of performance. Second of all, the most important setting of all, lighting. Lighting is a pain because it's a combination of lighting effects, particle effects, visual effects, uh, motion blur, focus blur, post-processing and shaders. It's all in one setting. So the moment you slide it up or down, your performance is gonna go down or up a lot and the game is gonna look much better, much more horrible. It's tremendous. Now the main problem is that the motion blur and the focus blur are both tied in together with the lighting. It means that they automatically go on the moment you go to medium or higher lighting settings. Now the problem is that these are the most consuming things that a GPU graphic card can do and you can't turn them off. But the problem is that on settings lower than high, the game looks bad. It requires so much processing just to look good. SimCity 4 did not have the problem. They were all pre-rendered graphics, but this is 3D. So try setting your game to medium lighting and see how it goes. Now, if you can take medium, that's great. And if you can take high, go high as well. Ultra may be too much. Only go there if you have everything else maxed out and you know why not then of course you get shadows you can set that to high or ultra and uh it's gonna have minor performance hits um compared to lightning it will have more performance hit than other settings but uh shadows make it look really good especially when the time swifts during the day and you can see the shadows just going from one side to the other. It looks beautiful. That, that animation is just beautiful. Well, you only get it with higher or ultra settings on shadows. So otherwise, you can play it with medium and you will have enough depth in the graphic um, for the game not to look bad. You just won't get the beautiful, you know, crisp shadows that you get for every building and sim and car. But uh, you get a very good result with just medium. Now, textures, um, this really depends on the memory you have on your graphic card. If you have half gigabyte or more, you can just go to high really. It's gonna have minor performance hits on the processing power and it's really more about the, the memory you have on your graphic card. So if you can take it, just go for high and that's it because you're gonna see very detailed bricks and and grass and, and everything, you know, it just makes it look way better. Geometry. That's the setting that adjusts how many polygons are drawn on the screen at the same time. What that means is how detailed the 3D models of cars and sims and buildings are, right? So if you set it to low, it will only keep high resolution models for really close buildings and items and everything else will go in low resolution. It won't mean it looks uh, pixelated because it's not textures. It means it won't have all the details on the doors and the windows and so on. Now, the higher you go, the more buildings at the same time have more quality. Also, roads look uh, smoother and the terrain looks smoother as well, um, even if you are really far. Now, animation detail. Uh, this basically adjusts how many animations can be played at the same time. 
such as for build, uh, building their uh, ex executing animations and the sims walking and everything you can take that lower and you're not gonna get animation stuff far away similar to geometry only with animation it will have some impact on your computer but less than geometry does usually with medium is fine you don't really need high for this setting either now tilt shift this is important tilt shift is the effect on which you get really close to something and the background gets all blurry right it gives you that sense of uh, the items being actually smaller than they are the higher you set this the more buildings and cars will look like toys basically but also will give you that beautiful perspective on the background to make great shots when, with your camera but it just means more blur and that's gonna make your graphic card way slower if you want to play with high lighting settings you can take tilt shift to low getting less scenarios with blurring which means less scenarios that are very GPU intensive which means more frames per second but no you can't deactivate it and motion blur stays there no matter what so you are still gonna get lag for you know trying to do blurring and motion blur but now anti aliasing what it does is making edges of 3d models smoother now if you have high lighting or higher uh, SimCity applies a very smart technique for applying anti-aliasing on static items which means you don't really need anti-aliasing if you have such setting just keep it off it will really drain your performance for no reason now frame rate cap uh, that's a hard one usually games uh, perform worse when you have a cap on uh, you should just set it to 60 or maybe 30 but it's gonna run then to 25 frames per second. It's not going to run as well. Um, this is a tricky one. Just set it to 60. Uh, no. Now, vertical sync is basically in every single game, and what it does is forcing the graphic card to completely produce one frame and send it to the screen before moving to the next one instead of simply uh, sending in parts of the image as it's drawing it. It will sort of uh, display some tearing if you move the camera too fast. And uh, you can just turn it on and it will slightly reduce your frames per second, maybe two or three percent. It's not really that much, but you can just see the image is more solid. And filters. Um, if you have performance issues, don't use filters. They are post-processing features and they do consume quite a bit. So uh, just keep them off entirely. Uh, unless you have a lot of FPS going on, like 60 or higher, and you just want to have a cool looking filter uh, otherwise play without it that's my advice it looks cool to use them but it just it's a big performance hit now i got a few questions regarding the mac performance the mac performance as i stated on my previous video is well i said 20 30 percent slower than windows uh, i think i was being too generous i'll say it's about 50 percent less than windows you just uh with the same settings than on windows you get about half the frame rates so it's kind of tough plus maxis has limited the resolutions you can use on your mac that's why i even noticed that i couldn't use my native resolution then i realized they limited which resolutions you could use because uh the performance is not really that good um so yeah uh basically you're kind of stuck in using really low resolutions on the mac you just don't have a choice uh don't go uh for low lighting effects that's just horrible it's just playing a lower resolution that's my advice but again if you have a, a mac uh, my advice to use maybe keep the mac version for whenever you just want to play a little bit and if you want to play for several hours uh get boot camp going install windows on it windows 7 and um just put SimCity in it all your progress is saved the one good thing about playing online all the time so <laughs> Uh, you know that's my advice that's what I do and if you want to use retina display just forget about it uh, you can't even play it on native resolution and if you're trying to go retina that's basically four times more pixels than a normal laptop resolution that's just not gonna happen <laughs> unless they really improve SimCity for the Mac that's not gonna happen don't even try it just stick with lower resolutions for now 
So that's it. I hope I gave you some more insight on not just what you should set it to, but what they do, what each setting does. So you have a better understanding of them and can make your own choices on what's really important, right? And just, just make sure the game stays fluid at all times. It will give you a headache if you don't. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, make sure you uh, leave a comment or contact me on Twitter, like many did already. And I'll see you next time.